Have you ever noticed how on some days the air is barely moving at all, while on other days it's in this great big hurry to get somewhere else? What makes the air move? Hang out with me for a few minutes as we uncover the mysteries of the wind. Now in order to understand the wind, there's really just two terms that you have to know. High pressure and low pressure. High pressure is an area in the atmosphere where denser, cooler air is sinking down. Low pressure is an area in the atmosphere where less dense, warmer air is on the rise. Have I got you totally confused? Don't worry, I've got a really great visual that's going to help you understand this. I'm going to use my fish tank as a model to show you how high pressure and low pressure will create wind. Since water and air are both fluids, that's materials with molecules that can flow around, they actually act in similar ways. But let's imagine that the water is actually the atmosphere, for the sake of our demonstration. Now over here on the left side of the tank, I have some ice in the tin in the water. Because of this, the molecules of the fluid will slow down, move closer together, causing them to become more dense, and sink. This creates a high pressure region for our observer Cruella as the falling air pushes down on her. On the other side of the tank, I have a rock that I've warmed up in a pot of boiling water. As the molecules around the rock heat up, they will speed up, spread out, making them less dense, and therefore they will start to rise up. And as the air rises, it will create a low pressure region for our observer, Goofy. Now you may be thinking to yourself, this is all very interesting, but what about the wind? Well, think about it. As that denser air falls and hits the ground, it's got to go somewhere. So it turns and travels horizontally along the surface of the earth and takes the place of the rising low pressure air. That's right, wind will always flow from the high pressure region to the low pressure region. What's the scientific term for this? It's a convection current. Think I'm just making all of this up? Well, guess what? It's already happening in this tank. All I have to do is add a little food coloring so you can see it in action. You see, wind is what happens when falling denser air moves to take the place of rising less dense air. Can you identify the direction that the wind would be blowing in this illustration? Remember, we experience those winds that blow along the surface of the earth. Let's go ahead and watch this again in fast motion so we can really see what's going on here. Now you may be wondering why the air is warmer in some places and cooler in others. Well, that's because the sun doesn't heat everywhere on the earth evenly. Some places, like the equator, get very direct sunlight while other places, like the poles, get very indirect light. In addition to these big global patterns, there's also other local causes of the uneven heating. For instance, different surfaces heat up differently. Like, water heats up much more slowly than land, and white surfaces like snow or ice will reflect a whole lot more of the sun's energy than darker surfaces. 
When you take all of these different things into account, you get a great variety of temperatures in the atmosphere in different places on Earth. And it's these high and low pressure regions that give us the wind. So there you have it. If you understand air pressure, you can be a wind pro. Remember, the air will always move from the high to the low. Have a great day. Don't let the wind blow you away. And as always, stay curious, my friends. <laughs>